Hello everyone and welcome to EBC News with the news I'm Shmuel Islamma. Ethiopia and Qatar have agreed to work together in military sector. Prime Minister Haile Mariam de Salin has come in Addis Ababa on Friday. The officials have on the occasion highlighted the need to further Addis Ababa on Friday. The officials have on the occasion highlighted the need to furthering the existing overall relations between the two nations. Gabraha Media and PR Media and PR Delivery Unit Minister has attended the discussion. They have deliberated on, they have deliberated on the Ethiopia-Qatari partnerships in East Africa and in Middle East regions. They have also held fruitful discussion on how to implement the agreements reached at various times. Qatar has expressed commitment to hasten the project financing support it placed before. The micro and small enterprises exhibition has kicked off here in Addis Ababa around stadium. The government also said it is continuing its support through recognizing their role for Ethiopia's economy. Jerusalem Bazaar reports. <laughs> Officer and others came from different parts of Ethiopia to participate on the micro and small enterprises exhibition here in Addis Ababa. The exhibition is opened as Ethiopian Christmas Looms. Eop and other exhibitors said the exhibition has created an opportunity to promote their product and to create market linkage. I came from Hawasa town to participate on this exhibition. Our enterprise is engaging on making cultural clothes. This exhibition is an ideal place for us, not only for selling, but also to create market chain with others and promote our products. We are working on leather and leather products here in Addis Ababa. The government is supporting us by offering incentives, including working sheds and loans. But we don't have a convenient place to sell our products. Therefore, this is a good opportunity concerning our demand for markets. Customers are also looks satisfied with the product brought by the exhibitors. <laughs> I came to this exhibition to buy cultural dress for my child for the upcoming Christmas celebrations. I have chosen this one. So far, the price is fair and the quality of the products is also good. The colors are the best and that they are all handmade and really the colors is the best um, thing that represents the culture. Considering economic contribution of micro and small enterprises, the government also reaffirmed its commitment to support the sector sustainably. The micro and the small enterprises are the basis of uh, industrialization as well as expansion of the economy, particularly in urban areas. Employment generation is a critical issue. So uh, these micro and small enterprises are uh, well known in generating employment opportunities and uh, income generating uh, options. So uh, uh, taking this into account, uh, the government of Ethiopia is uh, striving uh, to expand the employment opportunities and uh, the expansion and uh, establishment of micro and small scale enterprises. 15,000 people are expected to visit the exhibition. Federal Cooperatives Agency launched a cooperative development policy and strategy. The agency has on Friday held a consultation with concerned stakes on the draft document. To Bobby Udaha, the details. There are more than 82,000 basic cooperatives with 17 million members in Ethiopia. However, absence of relevant policy and strategy has for long been a bottleneck for their activities. In response to this, the Federal Cooperative Agency has launched a draft cooperative development policy and strategy. Raised to both the role of these cooperatives in the country's overall economic activities and to ensure citizens equal economic benefit that we have prepared this draft document. Cooperatives were structured under various ministries in an irregular manner, but this cooperative development policy and 
and strategy will bring all the unions under one umbrella, which is a step forward for the sector. The 15-year policy and strategy is said to be designed in a way that contributes for transforming the agriculture sector, which is the backbone of the economy. <laughs> It enables us to search for better market for agricultural producers. If the farmer's income increases, it will definitely benefit the national economy. The agency has also plans to hold further deliberations with various segments of the community on the draft document. The annual observance of the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, IDPD 2017, has been marked in Ethiopia under the theme Transformation Towards Sustainable and Resilient Society for All. The observation seeks to increase awareness of gains to be derived from the integration of persons with disabilities in every aspect of political, social, economic and cultural life. Addressing the gathering, Ethiopian Human Rights Commissioner Dr. Adisu Gebra Xavier said their commission is striving to ensure that that constitutional rights of the disabled are well protected. Their commissioner called on all stakes to consider people with disabilities in all forms of infrastructure development. Parliament members and federal and state government officials were among the attendees of the event, which was observed for the 26th time at the national level. Ethiopian Airlines has ceased negotiations with the government of Nigeria to manage Arik Air, the biggest private Nigerian airline, Ethiopian CEO disclosed. Ethiopian Airlines Group CEO told the Mariam told Ayin that the airline ceased talks due to financial and legal complications. Despite the failure to reach agreement on the management of Arik Air, Ethiopian remains interested in working together with private airlines in Nigeria, told the added. Ethiopian Airlines has become a preferred partner among African countries. The government of Zambia recently chose Ethiopian as a preferred strategic partner to re-establish its national carrier, Zambia Airways. The Zambian government intends to make an initial investment and own 55% of the new airline, while Ethiopian holds a 45% stake. The Ghanaian government has also shortlisted Ethiopian as one of the three airlines to relaunch a national carrier in the West African country. The state of Amhara says 38 million bar has been contributed in the past five months for the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. The state's public coordination office for the Renaissance Dam targeted to collect 100 million bar over the year. Head of the office indicated people in the state are continuing their support for the dam. People in our state have contributed more than 1 billion birds through bond purchasing, grants, and other means of supporting construction of the dam. In the past six years, the state population also labored, which is worth of 18 million birds. This year, we plan to execute 100 million birds worth bond selling. So far, 38 million birds worth bonds are sold out. Bond purchasing and basing development activities are to be strengthened to help construction of the dam. The head urged the public to sustain the support of the Renaissance Dam a Trophy is scheduled to tour in the state starting from January the 10th. We will receive the Renaissance Dam Trophy from Ben Shangulgum State on January 10th. Welcoming ceremony for the trophy will take place in 15 different places in all zones of the state. We urge people of the state from all walks of life, business people, investors, institutions, farmers and residents, to sustain their participation for the construction of the dam. Solid green development activities are said essential to make cities and towns beautiful and comfortable for dwellers. Bahadar's town is hosting a consultative meeting on cleanness, beauty and greenery of urban areas. Participants acknowledged Bahadar town's progress in being clean and beautiful, yet they also urged the administration to sustain the achievement by implementing scientific waste management. <laughs> We should create an encouraging atmosphere to sustain our collaborative efforts, especially on solid waste disposal. Generally, we need to join efforts for developmental, cleanness, greenery activities of the town. 
Bicycles and public transportation with big carrying capacity are deemed vital to alleviate problems of pollution in Addis Ababa. The tax system, while importing used cars which cause more pollution, is also said lenient. Abraham Asrat has more. According to documents, there are more than 50,000 cars in Addis Ababa. These cars are the cause for 47% of the overall emission in the city. Our tax system is to blame here because the tax levied on used cars is very small compared to those of new cars imported to Ethiopia. The used cars emit much more carbon than the new cars. The other major cause for pollution is high traffic congestion in the city. Using low carbon transportation and amending the tax system of the country with regard to used car importation are among the suggestions given to alleviate the problem in the city. The light electric trains in the city and cars that can accommodate huge number of passengers are the interventions taken so far. These options are expected to reduce the problem. These modes of transportation should be further encouraged. Emission of smokes from residences in the city and the garbage scattered in different places are the other reasons that are heightening the carbon emission. Soil and water conservation works will be carried out on over 2 million hectares of degraded land this Ethiopian fiscal year, according to the Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources. Alamayu Brahanu, public relations head of the ministry, told Ethiopian news agency that the conservation works will be launched on January the 9th, 2018, in all regional states except in Afar and Ethiopian Somali regional states. More than 21 million people are expected to take part in the conservation works, he said. Similar conservation works were carried out on more than 2 million hectares of land last year, it was noted. Finally, George Weah supporters took to the streets celebrating the victory in the presidential runoff. This is the country's first democratic transition in over 70 years. Now Weah walks into the presidency with supporters expecting him to score highly for a nation that has 80% of its population living on less than a dollar a day. Abraham Asrat has more from CGTN. This was a moment that former international footballer George Way had built an unassailable lead in the Liberian election. A spontaneous celebration broke out across Liberia's capital, Monrovia. Moments earlier, in its first press briefing since post closed the Electoral Commission announced Way had won 65% of the vote. The total vote, CDC, 720,023. And uh, the unity party, 451,088. Invalid votes, 27,873. Total votes, 1,198,984. 1 it has taken away 12 years to clinch the presidency. His supporters are ecstatic. Everybody knew that it was going to happen one, one day and this day are going to pass. It seems those who back Boaki's side have accepted the defeat. Well, the voice of the people has been heard loud and clear. We thought that our vice president was the best alternative for this country. But for the fact that people overwhelmingly voted for um, uh, Ambassador Weir, it means that the people, the way of the people should actually persist over whatsoever we talk. Where his campaign appealed to the youth, but now comes the hard part. Liberia is one of the poorest countries in the world. More than 80% of the population lives in extreme poverty and hundreds of thousands of children are out of school. Now many are hoping George Weah can deliver his campaign promises. The next government, I would like to see youth empowerment. I'm talking about people working, not taking good salary. I want for labor, for the government to improve improve the labor system. In the first hundred days, I would like to see system, because uh, within Liberia, we lack a system, we don't have system. Yeah, whenever there is system, you're going to see things moving smoothly. You know, it helps to also bring investors that we were, encourage the living system of our country. Well, that's all we have time for. Many thanks for watching. Have a nice weekend.